You might have heard the bad news. Testosterone levels are dropping across the world. It's true. Since uh, about the year 2000, testosterone levels have generally dropped by about 25%. Some estimates show as much as maybe even closer to 50%. It's no wonder that testosterone replacement therapy is now an exploding business. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about testosterone replacement therapy and some of the huge mistakes people make when they get on testosterone. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 No, it's, um, when you look at the data on this, it's really, it's, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Mm. A 20-something-year-old today will have the testosterone level of an average 60-year-old in the 1980s is mm -hmm. what they're showing in the data. By the way, this is not new news. We've been observing a drop in testosterone now for longer than just the year 2000 for i think since the 80s uh we've kind of seen this this start to happen but it hasn't slowed down and they're not sure what the heck is going on uh, there's a lot of speculations in terms of lifestyle yeah diet obesity's up people don't environmental factors yeah maybe toxins yeah you know estrogens and stuff like that but Tech. there's um, a definite man. yeah need for it based off of our current situation and environment i think what's interesting about it you know that you brought this up too is like even like growing up i had all kinds of misconceptions about what uh steroids or anabolics or you yeah. know testosterone would do uh it was sort of this uh, thought that it was like the magical serum that mm -hmm. just all of a sudden got you to look like Arnold. Do no. you think? Do you think there is a uh, a single biggest offender, or do you think it's really just the uh, culmination of all those things that we're, we're talking about? You think it's got to be a combination? Because, um, like, if you if you try to connect it to other studies, like grip strength test. Um, grip strength in young men is is declined significantly. College aged males. Their grip strength today is so much weaker than it was, you know, three or four gener you know, th three or four decades ago. So it could be lack of activity and muscle mass. Um, we know strength training in many cases will raise testosterone. Could be obesity. Obviously, obesity has exploded ever since then. Um, could be a, a vitamin uh, deficiency. Vitamin D deficiencies are higher now than they were before. And then, of course, the addition of. Uh, chemical exposure. Like, uh, you know, we are now exposed to hundreds of chemicals that generations past weren't exposed to. Maybe on their own won't have a huge effect, but when you add them all up, they might have an effect. Nonetheless, um, you can greatly impact your natural testosterone levels. But what many men are finding, especially as they get into their 40s, is that even changing their lifestyles, uh, their testosterone levels uh, don't change much, or it's so low that if even if they double their testosterone, they would still, still be considered low. low. Still low, which is what happens with a lot of them, right? They'll go in and get tested, and they're so low, they're way below range. It's like you could double it, and you're still kind of in the low range. So you know, testosterone replacement therapies become big business. I mean, I remember, I mean, just when we started the podcast, I, I never saw ads for oh yeah testosterone replacement. Now you see you see it all over the place. You hear it on podcasts. You see it all over social media. And so more and more men are using it because when you have low testosterone, you feel like garbage. It's, yep. it's a feel good hormone. So when you don't have it, your motivation's low, your confidence low, of course, libido, that's the biggest sign is low. You tend to store more body fat. You know, you don't have as much muscle. Um, you have less energy. Um, it can be connected to depression and anxiety. So you know, if you, if, if it's something that needs medical intervention, it could definitely, I mean, it makes a huge difference. You get someone with low testosterone, you put them on testosterone, they're going to feel in many cases a lot better. Well, I, no, I think it's, it's life-changing both men and women, yeah. you know, both cases. Uh, and I, and I think this is true for any of your major hormones. Uh, like if your, your hormone hormones are out of balance or you are abnormally low in almost any of them, I think it's got major, uh, you know, impact on yeah. how you feel. And, and a lot of those things are compounding. Like, I mean, coming from somebody who had, uh, you know, very low testosterone that I, your motivation to train, uh, to get up, to, to work, yeah. to like it's, and then that like snowballs. So it's like, you're already feel weak and, and tired and then you lack the motivation to want to do any of these things. And it's just like, it just gets worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. And, you know, sometimes, and I, I think, you know, going over, I know you want to go over the six 
you know, biggest mistakes and stuff like that. The first one with, you know, no change in lifestyle. I think that's the first uh, major problem is that uh, it can mask a lot of things that are going on. And what a lot of people don't do is exhaust all the potential uh, natural lifestyle changes they can make first yeah. because it can make such an impact of going straight into TRT. But then you could have had a huge opportunity to potentially fix your sleep or increase protein intake or do something else that could have naturally done it. And then you just mask this this problem by- I just think it's a big mistake uh, because- So if you don't do any lifestyle changes while going on testosterone, in my opinion, you're missing a good opportunity. There's a couple of reasons. One, behaviorally speaking- when you start on a new regimen or a medical intervention, it tends to serve as an impetus for change. And just my experience with clients, right? Anytime a client needed, uh, figured out that their thyroid was low or that they needed to uh, take testosterone or some other medical intervention, it was a wonderful, it was almost like you're walking through a new door into a new life. So let's start doing some lifestyle changes. And it's a great opportunity, especially with testosterone, right? If your testosterone is low, harder to burn fat, harder to build muscle, less energy. Well, now that you're taking it, let's also clean up your diet a little bit. And you're probably more motivated to do so, right? Let's yeah. do a little bit more activity. Maybe you're more motivated to do so. And you'll get better results, right? Maybe you, you were experiencing in the past with your workouts. Maybe you were trying to work out, but you just weren't recovering very well. And you just couldn't figure out what was going on. And it wasn't, you know, you just, and you thought maybe it's because I'm older, you know, maybe I'm, I'm 43 now. It's not like when I was younger. Maybe that's what's going on. But then you go get tested and you're like, oh, your testosterone's in the floor. You get on testosterone. It's like, okay, now let's use this. Let's use this and maximize uh, all of the, the right. potential Right. It's an positive. intervention to be a catalyst. More totally. Anything. It's, yeah, you want to use it like that so it, it steers you more into a healthier lifestyle path. You can make better decisions with your nutrition. Yes. You can train a little bit more effectively and, and more consistently. Um, but yeah, I, I did. I, and that was one thing I did notice with some of my friends who were in that predicament where it was like their testosterone was in the floor, but you know, they, they get this, uh, intervention and then you, they feel good for that, for that amount of time, but then they don't maximize and capitalize upon yes. that. And it, it, dude, that feeling only lasts for so long. And then what you end up wanting to up your dose or you get sort of in that sort of dependency, uh, cycle. Now, no change in, in lifestyle is a bit of a broad statement. And so when you think about all the major lifestyle changes that somebody should be making while on or off TRT, um, what are the common offenders that you you would see where somebody would just, they would hop on and then they would like, I think right away, uh, sleep has to be one yes. of the, the main. Totally. One, it's one of the, one of the biggest things that can impact your testosterone levels. If you're getting really bad sleep right. and like high levels of stress, which normally go coincide, um, it's one of the quickest ways to crush testosterone levels in men. Uh, and a lot of times when you take this exogenous testosterone, you raise those levels up, you feel significantly better, but still are getting really poor sleep, yeah. which plays such a huge role in still how much muscle you build. And Today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and also turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. This episode is brought to you by a sponsor, Element, Element T. This is an electrolyte powder you add to your water. No artificial sweeteners, no sugar, but it's high in sodium. It's the right amount of sodium to fuel you through your workouts. If you don't eat a heavily processed diet, a low-carb diet, you work out a lot, you got to use this. It makes a huge difference in your performance. It also tastes good. Go check them out. Go to drinkelementt.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get a free sample pack with any drink mix purchase. Also, this month's program sale, MAPS Split, half off. And the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Workout Programs, also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Yeah, the other one is, um, you know, not adding uh, appropriate strength training. You know, strength training. So now you're on testosterone. You know, when you when you send a signal to build muscle, you also increase the amount of androgen receptors that you have in your body. It's, it's androgen receptor density. This has been shown quite reliably. So you strength train, and what happens is so testosterone. Think of testosterone as a signaler in the body, but it needs to attach to receptors. That's how it tells the body what to do. Well, not only 
can you take testosterone? But now you can actually increase the amount of receptors that it can attach to. So you're going to make this medical intervention much more effective. Now, make it appropriate strength training, but not adding any strength training while going on testosterone, to me, is a huge... It's like, oh my God, you can make whatever benefits you're feeling from going from low to normal testosterone, which you will notice, you'll feel so much better when you add a little bit of strength training and you optimize your sleep. Now it's like, okay, now we're putting everything together and it's making a, a really big difference. Now, what about the mistake uh, in regards to adding training volume uh, on the, like, say, training, you know, fanatics that get on testosterone? That's number two. Cause Cause that, that, yes. Because that was a, this was a mistake I made uh, as a young kid who dabbled with steroids uh, early on was thinking that I was invincible and that the more I trained- uh, Yeah, now more, I won't overtrain. Yeah, and so, False. and because you get away with a little bit of that and you see some results still, even with that, you know, overtraining, uh, you don't realize how much you're actually holding yourself back by not having the appropriate amount of training. Yeah, two ends of the spectrum, right? The person who does nothing and then the person who goes, oh, now I'm on testosterone. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been working out. I'm going to the gym five days a week. I would get that as well as, a, a, you know, managing gyms. You would see that like, oh, I'm getting a new membership. I just went on testosterone. Yeah. I'm going to be here six days a week. Take it all on at once. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you still need to train yourself appropriately. You're, you could have the most testosterone in the world, but if you overtrain your body, you're going to feel like garbage and you hurt yourself. So yeah, don't. And so for someone listening right now, who's like, okay, I'm just, I'm about to go on testosterone. I have been working out. Uh, this whole time. Um, what should I change about my workout? Nothing. Yeah. You change nothing about your work. If you've been working out and you go on testosterone, here's what'll happen to you. The volume will naturally increase. And what I mean by that stronger. is- That's right. Yeah. So people think volume, meaning I need to add sets and I need to add exercises. No, yeah. no, no. When you add weight to the bar, that is increased volume. So the mm -hmm. testosterone that you're now taking is going to take your normal workout, whatever the weights you're using, and it's going to increase them. So your volume will naturally go up. You don't have to think to yourself, I'm going to add a bunch more volume or add extra days in the gym. You don't right. have to do that. Not to mention, you want to use that as your litmus test anyway. So yes. you want to make sure that you train at, at the same kind of pace, the same type of protocol that you were doing before. So you could see whether or not there's like a substantial difference in energy and strength and and, and keep paying attention to those type of metrics. Uh, but yeah, like like Sal said, it's, it's going to naturally increase it. And so you're going to want to be motivated to add a little bit more you know, intensity to, to the exercise by adding load or, uh, you know, down the road, we'll adjust volume as we go. Such great advice, assuming that the person has uh, the appropriate <laughs> dose of training already. Yes. Right? right. Because that, that could also be an issue too, is uh, somebody already- Overtraining. Overtraining like crazy, get on TRT. Oh, no. Now this masks uh, yeah, their symptoms right? they had before. And all of a sudden they see a little bit of a bump in strength and more like that. Oh, great. More and keep piling on. So assuming that you, you know, and like, let's just, let's assume that you are listening to this podcast. And so hopefully you follow a MAPS program. So you're, you're following something that has got, uh, that keeps you in check with your, your volume. Uh, hopefully that you're on something like that. And then you just allow the strength gains to add the volume naturally through getting stronger. Right. Uh, and you're not somebody who's training six, seven days a week, double days, and then you slap on the testosterone, you see a little bit of gains in muscle and you think you're heading down the right path. Yes. Now next, this one is a, is a mistake that you would see, you see with uh, high level athletes quite a bit, but mm. you even see this with everyday people who go on uh, testosterone. Now with athletes, they use them as performance enhancing drugs. The mistake is to put no focus on mobility training. So if you suddenly start to get stronger, mm -hmm. um, your, so your muscles will build faster than your ligaments and your tendons do. That's what happens when you go from low to high testosterone. This is what happens to athletes when they go yep. on anabolic steroids as well. A lot of injuries you see as a result. Yes. So it's like, it's like you have a car, you, dr you increase the horsepower, but you don't strengthen the frame because it takes longer to strengthen. Don't go hitting the, hitting the gas as hard as you can. You'll twist the frame, right? This is what happens uh, to your body as well. Not to mention testosterone also is, a, is to some extent in central nervous system stimulant. Some of the strength gains you get from testosterone are, have nothing to do with the better, stronger muscles. That's part of it. Or, or should I say bigger muscle fibers? That's part of it. But rather the central nervous system's ability to fire with more force. 
um, a, a central nervous system that fires with more force requires better organization uh, of using that force to reduce risk of injury. This is why the higher, this is why you see this kind of injury uh, curve uh, or inverted curve with uh, with people when they work out. Like if you're super detrained, deconditioned, high risk of injury, you start working out appropriately, your risk of injury goes down. You start really pushing the training and get real strong. Injury risk time starts to go up because you can generate so much force. So mobility needs to be a, 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 a place in your training, especially if now you're about to go through, and this is what happens when you go on testosterone, when you go from low to, to, to high testosterone, that initial six six to 12 months, you'll see some, if you do everything right and you train yourself properly, don't overtrain, eat right and all that stuff, you'll see some really nice, significant uh, gains in comparison to how you were before. Not adding mobility to that uh, can increase your risk of injury, stiffness, um, and just just overall lack of, of, of movement quality. Yeah, I think this point highlights the, um, the muscle-bound uh, – meathead misconception, right? This That's idea, where it comes from. Yeah, this is where yeah. this comes from, this idea of, oh, if you build a bunch of muscle, you, you're you not flexible and you yeah. lose range of motion. And and that's because of somebody who uh, abuses stuff like this and, you know, trains in this shortened range of motion and is just getting muscle bound, muscle bound, muscle bound in one direction and doesn't take the joint through its full range of motion. And then you get this misconception that, yeah. oh, big buff, strong guys uh, that it ends up losing their mobility because of the muscle. And it's like, well, no, that's that has to do with their programming and their training yeah. and the lack of of attention to mobility and taking the joint through full range of motion, not because they're on TRT or not because they lifted weights. It's because how they lifted yeah. weights, how they used the TRT. Yeah. They're just causes. adding more reinforcement to, to strengthen those specific ranges of motion you're focusing on. And yep. so it's like you, you were getting strong just uh, by doing those before, but now that's, you know, you're, you're enhancing just that process and not, uh, you know, reinforcing, uh, which too, if you look at mobility, and this is always something I have to bring up, uh, you know, even if you're not an athlete or you're an athlete, it's going to enhance your overall strength. It's going to enhance yes. your overall physique. Yes. Uh, the, the more you get into full range of motion training, uh, you know, to be able to have that kind of strength, stability, and control squeezes out so much more potential for your body. I'm glad you said that because uh, people sometimes think it's a trade. Um, okay, more gains or more mobility. So, oh, I got to work on mobility. It's going to take away from my gains. No, no, no. More mobility is a factor that will contribute to better gains. And, and again, to be clear, tightness, immobility issues, stiffness, it comes from your central nervous system feeling like or assessing that you cannot move a particular way without some kind of instability. In other words, it feels like it's not safe to allow you to move a particular way. Mm. This is why you see that stiffness. If I train always like this and no other way, and I get really strong that way, my body's like, okay, we got 100% power moving forward and back. We got 15% power moving left and right. Let's limit left to right. Let's keep this person stiff and have them move a particular way. And you see it, like you said, Adam, you see the guy who yeah. moves around the gym like you know he's made out of wood. And it's because his central nervous system is controlling everything, trying to keep him in ranges of motion that it deems a uh, uh, safe. Yeah. Uh, the next one is that, you know, because testosterone is a feel-good hormone, it can often mask other signs of poor health. So to give to, to kind of illustrate this, natural testosterone fluctuates. Okay, so if you have good, healthy testosterone naturally, you'll see it go up in the morning when it peaks, it kind of starts to drop. It'll go up when you're rested well and you're fed well. When you're depressed and you lose sleep, it tends to go down. When you win a, a you know a, at a sporting event, they've shown spikes in it, right? When you're when you're with someone you're attracted to, you it, you tend to have spikes. When you get your ass kicked in something, it tends to drop down. <laughs> My the point is testosterone fluctuates, okay? Um, when you're on testosterone replacement therapy, there's no fluctuation. It's high. That's it. Like you take your testosterone, it gets up high. It starts to level out towards the end of the week when you take your next dose and then it's up. Regardless of sleep, regardless of diet, regardless of lifestyle, you have high testosterone. What that does is it tends to mask certain symptoms and it can, it can actually drive you to continue to engage in behaviors that aren't so healthy. So in other words, if you know, before your lack of sleep was lowering your testosterone and you could feel it. Well, now your lack of sleep, you feel like you're okay. You're not. 
you feel the testosterone's masking it. You're still getting the damaging effects of lack of sleep. So you need to pay attention to all the other aspects of your health because now you have this artificial high signal of testosterone that's uh, masking a lot of things. I've, I found this one really interesting in my experience with uh, coaching competitors. So I used to get a lot of female competitors related to the, the diet stuff, right? So uh, a lot of these coaches... Uh, put them on extreme diets, and then they would come to me to help them fix that. A lot of the guys would come to me because they found out how low of a dose of testosterone that I was taking and all the copious amounts of drugs they were taking and not seeing the results mm. they would want to see. I can't tell you guys how many hmm. times I took on a client and then they would lay out like, this is what I'm taking. It was just like so much stuff. And then when I'm like, they have the crazy acne. They're having these crazy sweats at night. They're having like, they're having all these bad symptoms oh my God. of like, dude, this is not healthy. You do you, like, are you not realizing that your body's trying to give you all these signs that this is not right. This is too much. And you thinking that more of this stuff is going to be a, a better route. This is, it was really surprising to me how many people ignore some of these signs that you would think are just so obvious. Yeah. And so when you put this up here, like it, it, it brought me back to some of these conversations that I'd have with some of these guys that like, you don't, first of all, we're men's physique guys. So the amount of testosterone needed to build a men's physique body is not like a, you know, Mr. Olympia bodybuilding physique. And so you're already way overdoing it. Then in addition to that, you're listing off all these things that are going on. Like that's your body trying to tell yeah. you like, this is not, this is not good for you. It's yeah. too much. You got to pay attention to all the other uh, things in your life uh, and health signs because the testosterone can sometimes mask those things again, because it's this kind of feel good thing. Like depression, for example, you know, um, low testosterone caused depression, but so can shitty lifestyle and things in your life. Well, if you want testosterone artificially start to feel better, you may ignore problems in your life that maybe you would have paid attention to. It's another example. Uh, next is uh, inconsistent dosing. This one's interesting to me. Um, and I, you know, this is one that my doctor clients would tell me about uh, when the ones that I had that worked on hormones, because with testosterone, the, the, it's the most common dosing. There's two, there's either creams uh, where you rub them on or injection. And, you know, most, you know, I guess forward thinking doctors or ones that talk about performance, recommend injection because I guess the creams have a tough time sometimes getting people's levels up high, maybe not for everybody. But the problem with the injections was people would time it weird throughout the week. Oh, I forgot to do it today. I'll just do it tomorrow or the next day. You need to be very consistent because of the spike and drop in testosterone. And if you wait too many days or you take it too soon, you could cause too high of a spike or you could cause uh, it to get uh, too low and then get symptoms of these kind of you know, low testosterone. So you got to be really consistent with your dosing, same day, same time, every week, or if you use the creams, same time, every single day. So I, this is, I, I was guilty of this. I was totally guilty. And exactly what you just described was, oh, shoot, I forgot today. Or, oh, I, you know, normally do it at 7 a.m. I got a shower, I forgot to, oh, I'll take mm -hmm. it tonight at 8 p.m. or mm -hmm. what that, not realizing the effects of that. And the, another point you didn't make on that too is the cascading effects with the other hormones of that because yeah. you your uh testosterone drops or spikes and your estrogen moves with that it, also some of it gets yeah. converted to estrogen yeah and so that was one of my big problems was i was uh struggling keeping that from converting over to estrogen one of the major reasons for that was because i was really bad with the consistency around that not realizing what it was doing to me yeah. with uh converting over to estrogen so this is, and, and the more I train people that were on TRT, the more common I realized this was, was people having a hard time being very consistent. So if you are using this or doing this and you find out, and by the way, too, like, for example, like when you work with Transcend, one of the things that we would do is, uh, cause everybody's different, right? So first of all, the, the testosterone has a half-life. Uh, some people are major responders. So as soon as they take a shot, they have a huge spike mm -hmm. and then a steep crash afterwards. Some people have a nice rise and climb and then kind of steady. Uh, and some have this kind of like, you know, a lot doesn't do hardly anything and it kind of plateau. And so you have a lot of people that respond differently to the shots and that will need it at different days. And so we would test 
uh, uh, you know, three days after a shot, four days after a shot, five yeah. days after a shot, like to, to watch to and see where you're at. to see where I'm at. So crucial. You go through this process. With yes. The doctor, you know? And I never until my experience with them and, and getting that granular about it, uh, did I ever really get my dosing up and it's the best I've ever felt. Uh, and all the years that I've either did myself doing testosterone yeah. or actually went through a clinic, uh, this was the best I've ever felt. And a lot of it had to do with my dosages and timing. Yep. It can yep. it can greatly impact. Even splitting it sometimes throughout yep. the week is like a massive difference for a lot of people because of what you're describing in those highs and lows. So yeah, yeah it's really important to kind of go through it because too, you want to avoid all of you know, the side effects as much as possible. And so there's a totally a way to do that, but it takes a lot of conversations about how everything's going. You know, mentioning side effects, and you mentioned this earlier too, Adam, uh, more is not better. Yep. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have the idea that more is better, uh, but that's not true. More can cause more side effects. It can cause more conversion to estrogen, requiring the addition of other pharmaceuticals with their own risk uh, profiles. You know, a lot of men, you know, if they go too high, they have to take uh, medication that that prevents the conversion to estrogen. And those medications have, uh, in many cases, many people would say are worse for you than the testosterone itself. Um, more is not better. Now, the, the belief is more is better because we get this like high testosterone is great. And so more must be better. And then you got like the bodybuilding world, the athletic world, who pushes more of the limits because they really don't care about uh, quality of life as much as they care about like how they look or how big or strong they get. It's not, more is not better. There is a right uh, level for you. And this is important to work out with your doctor. I, I have had, look, we've, we've had many listeners that have gone through um, our partners at mphormones.com who then will message me and say, they started me at this dose and I actually lowered it and felt much better. Um, when, you know, if you asked me that 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought that that, that was the case. So I thought, well, yeah, if you go in the upper limits, it's probably better for everybody. There's a lot of men that are like, no, 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 I felt worse at, at those high level, at two high levels. I felt much better bringing it down uh, right around wherever they were. So it is important to understand this. And that means that when you're on it, if you start to notice, you know, certain side effects like water retention, you know, being a common one, it's too high. Uh, maybe poor sleep. Sometimes too high can cause poor sleep. Good optimal testosterone makes your sleep better. Too high or too low makes your sleep uh, your sleep starts to get affected uh, negatively. So you talk with your doctor about yeah. this, um, and then they can kind of find that that right dose for you. But definitely more is not better. That's that's not the case at all. I didn't learn how impactful this was until I started to go through a clinic. So early on in my early twenties. Uh, black market, experimenting with myself, uh, assuming adding more or doing more of uh, whatever testosterone I was taking, I thought was the better answer to everything like that, uh, not realizing uh, the side effects I was causing, the adverse things like with sweating through the, like trying to sleep and my bed would be soaked in sweat, like all these side effects that of course my body's trying to tell me is is not ideal for me, just assuming that the, the more is going to be better and then going through a clinic where they bring my dose all the way down and be like, this is just a therapeutic dose. This is where you're supposed to be. And me thinking like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get jacked off this. I'm gonna feel like it's yeah. some of the best shape I ever got in. Like when you, you look at my run in the competing world, that was done on TRT. That was not yeah. done on the stuff that I took. The, the irony of that is that the best physique body I ever built uh, was during obviously competing years. Uh, when I was younger, I was taking three, four times the amount of testosterone with half half the physique and didn't realize like, wow, the appropriate dose really allowed my body to do what it was supposed to do and allow my diet, my training, everything else to take over and build a ton of muscle just by simply being in the therapeutic range versus what I thought was going to be better of, oh, the more I take, yeah. the more muscle I build. It doesn't always work that way. It is important to find a good clinic or place that really understands working with testosterone, that doesn't just look at the range um, that says you're supposed to be within this range, but rather looks at the range, asks you about your symptoms, asks you about how you feel, follows you and adjusts it to individualize it to you because everybody's a little different with how they respond to a particular dosage of testosterone. We work with partners at mphormones.com. We vetted them ourselves. They're the best and they will do that with you. They will work with you 
to make sure that the amount that you're on is ideal for both your health and uh, your performance. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a free guide there on testosterone. It talks about how to raise testosterone naturally. It's at MP, uh, it's, it's at mindpumpfree.com, excuse me. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam's at mindpumpadam. Adam. 